Elizabeth, are we live? Good morning, Huntington Chapel. And those who are joining online, welcome. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. It was, it was a week. And uh, one of the things that got me through this week was uh, this time of year, I love to listen to Handel's Messiah. And the beauty of that masterpiece. Because it tells of the prophecies of the coming king. This morning, I would like to read from Isaiah 53 because we need to begin to prepare our hearts for the season that is upon us. It isn't just about a baby. Although they are wonderful, and they are beautiful, and they are fresh from heaven. It's about the Savior of the world. And this is the description in Isaiah 53. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we consider him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, we all, like sheep have gone astray, and each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Please stand with me as we open our service in prayer. Father, we ask for your forgiveness this week in the ways that we, like sheep, turned away from you. Father, we ask that you would be the lifter of our countenance. That this morning you would restore us to the fullness of your glory. Father, we ask that you would work in us that which only you can do. Heal our hearts and take care of all of the wounds that we today would rejoice in our God, 
our maker. Father, we ask that you would be with our pastor, that you would be with Lucetta, that you would be with Marilyn, who are recovering from illness and surgery, and any others from this house or who are listening who need your healing touch. Father, we give you this service, and we ask that you would anoint it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, Huntington Chapel. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Hallelujah.
never runs out of me. Your love never fails and never gives up. It never runs out of me. Your love never fails and never gives up. It never runs out of me. Your love. Oh, gee.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we can have a heavier week than others. This morning I feel like we just really need to break through the wall.
My God is mighty to say, He is mighty to say forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered. Give God some praise right now. Savior. He can move the mountains. Said 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 he can move the mountains, and he can move the mountains, he can move the mountains, and he can move the mountains, and he can move the mountains, and he can move the mountains, he can move the mountains, he can move the mountains, oh, Jesus can move the mountains, any mountain. He can move the mountains. He can move the mountains. So much sing that right now. Said he can move the mountains. He can move the mountains. See, something happens when we open our mouths and we begin to sing that to the heavens right now. He can move the mountains. looks like in your life personally. He can move those mountains in your life. Open up your mouth right now and declare that right now. Said he can move the mountains. Oh, he can move the mountains. 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 We thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory and all the honor.
There's nothing I hold on to There's nothing I hold on to Holding on to you, Jesus There's nothing I hold on to no. But I hold on to you I climb this mountain With my eyes wide open Today, uh, Pastor Doug is not feeling well, so um, and Juwan is not feeling well. So I can make a comment here about, you know, women tend to not get sick as fast as men, but that would be unfair, unfair. So, um, so I'm doing the announcements today, and then my daughter actually is preaching. So it's, uh, yeah. So um, before we go into the announcements, we're going to start with our Advent reading, celebrating. The, um, the coming of Christ, even though we know it happened a long time ago. It's, Christmas is all about anticipation, right, of the fun, of gifts, of fellowship. And so uh, we light one candle each week right, in preparation. And so this week, Matt and Jenna are coming to light the candle and do the reading. Yay. Maybe it's just Janet. Don't tell me Matt's sick. Oh, okay, that would have been too funny. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this week we're reading from Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 5. And it says, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her inequity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Thank you, guys. Because, yeah, that is one of the coolest things. If you look into the prophecy of the Old Testament, how surely it predicted, you know, that the Messiah would come, where he would be born, how he would live. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing to look at Isaiah this time of year in particular. So um, that being said, we're still looking for a few more families to lead the Advent reading each week, right? We have a couple more weeks to go. So if you're interested in doing that, if you could please speak to Jason or speak to Kevin, um, and then, then we can uh, connect you with that. So today after service, we're having our annual meeting. Um, and we encourage you to stick around as we go over the budget. And each ministry has written a little report um, about a summary of the year. So um, it's a great time to see what's going on um, in your church. I see that this year it's a little different. We're going to do it in Kellogg Hall while we're having snacks. I like that idea. So, um, so grab, a, grab a snack, sit down in there. We're going to begin with the annual meeting um, after the service. And this week, we're having um, a special midweek uh, worship and prayer service starting at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary. And then we have uh, prayer cards. Right, and so we, Jason has made up some new prayer cards. And so, if you have a prayer request, you put it on the prayer cards. 
There's um, some at the table as you ex exit the sanctuary, um, and please fill it out. You can hand it to an usher, and we'll also put up the, uh, there's a white wooden prayer box. We'll put it on the, the table near the snacks, and so you can just put your prayer request in there so let us know how we can be praying for you. Uh, we have a lot of people to pray for. A lot of people are having had surgery this week or are, are sick. So um, it's important that we lift one another up in prayer. I know Lucetta had surgery, and Marilyn Gertz had surgery, and I know Amy Rivera is um, is, is stuck in bed, um, not feeling well with, um, you know, I don't know if I should say why, but she's, she's good. She's doing good. Um, so, and then, um, let's see, what else? Oh, so next week, oh, Erica, you have an announcement for Sunday School Kids Church? Good morning, everyone. Um, if you're online or you're here, we're going to be doing a Christmas breakfast with our children next week. And we want to also um, let them wear their comfy pajamas because we're all going to be, you know, sitting down together. And also all of our staff, we want all of you to come as well because we want to sit down and really get to know our children. Because our kids are going through a lot of things and they need to know you know I heard one of our kids two of our kids say this they had said that um, you know I heard this story before you know God asked me to go back to the basics with our children you know these last um, couple months and I heard you know I, I've heard that story before I know that already but do you know it up here or do you know it here so God does, wants us to take our head knowledge and move it to heart knowledge. So um, it's next week. Sorry, it was so late. Um, God did put it on my heart, but then he was not giving me any direction with it. I wasn't sure. So sorry, Matt, he gave me the direction, you know, last minute. But come out next week, comfy pajamas, have fun, food. Uh, during service, during service, our uh, 1030. During sun, the Sunday school, yes, yeah, okay. yes. Good. So come out and have fun. Nice, nice. I like the pajamas. So I guess adults could wear we could yeah. pajamas too. Yeah, for the staff, we're supposed to be there. Okay, Do we nice, get to nice. In our pajamas too. Okay, and then uh, exciting thing happening on December seventeenth. Where's Mr. Al, the director? It's exciting, right? It's a great testimony to the community. Good morning. So uh, as we've been saying, we're going to be having the live nativity on the 17th. For the cast and crew, please look at your emails because there's been information that's been being released. Um, if anybody feels led, uh, we're looking for one or two more angels to join our angel choir. Um, so and for those of you who I've emailed that haven't gotten your packet yet, you could see me. I'll have it for you after service. And also a little bit about the men's uh, ministry. Right? Right. So uh, uh, the men's ministry, uh, we've got several plans coming up for 2023. And we just wanted to let the men know that uh, we're going to start doing some outreach uh, items uh, and uh, other things. So please come check it out. Uh, offer your, uh, your opinions and your help uh, and make a difference. Thanks. Thank you. And the... The women, we had a great fellowship time yesterday making wreaths, and uh, it's good to gather together. Um, so, um, so yeah, so December 17th is the nativity, and so we're not having a Christmas Eve service because this year, December 25th, is on a Sunday. I remember years ago, my kids were little, and, you know, we went to church because it happened to be Christmas Day, and I remember, you know, a neighbor child whose, you know, family was didn't go to church, the kid would, could not believe that we'd be going to church on Christmas morning. They're like, you're going to miss it all. And I'm thinking, wow, what is the focus, right? So so we're having church together Christmas morning. Um, I'm, I will I'll convince the preacher to make it a brief sermon so we can get back to our families. Um, regular schedule this week, Higher Ground Monday night, the dance ministry is meeting on Tuesday night. And prayer on Wednesday, special prayer, 7 p.m. So please, everybody, come out and join. We all need prayer. 
Thursday morning Jesus story time for children birth to four years old and uh, youth ministry Thursday night and uh, men's prayer on Saturday morning. So with that, Steve, I think it's your turn. If the ushers could take our offering. As we were singing the song, I will climb this mountain. I don't know if any of you has actually climbed a mountain, but it is an incredible experience. When I first became a Christian, uh, I did a boys' battalion at Black Rock. And we had about 20 boys, and they were all from Bridgeport. And we gathered them all together, and we went up to Mount Marcy, which is the highest mountain in New York State. And I can remember at the bottom of the mountain, we said it's important that we all make it to the top. We're not gonna go unless we all make it to the top. And man, was that hard. Some boys, we couldn't slow them down. They were at the front and we had to tell them, we have to be able to see you with our eyes. You could go in front, but you have to see us. Then there were all the guys in the middle and then there were the stragglers. And they were like Eeyore. Oh, I don't know if I can make it. Why are we doing this? What's the point? This is so stupid. But when they got to the top, to see their faces, because the higher you go, the clearer you see. And when you get to the top, you have a 360. Nothing hinders your view. What a glorious sight. If you would bring the offering up. Father, how we thank you that you provide you provide everything we need in this life. And we freely give that which you have given us, that your kingdom would come here on earth as it is in heaven. Bless these offerings, Father God, and multiply them in the mighty name of Jesus. Kevin. How's everyone doing today? Day of a lot of changes and adventures, and I suppose technically we should probably dismiss the uh, kids for children's church, except if you're in the nursery, please hold on, because I'm in the nursery and I can't be two places at once. Liz is in there. Oh, Liz is in? Oh, wow, well, okay. And I thought I was covered already. We uh, prepare for communion. This is an opportunity to perhaps think about Christmas in a different way. What, what is Christmas? It is the coming of Christ into our world. And 
what happens when we partake of the elements? We partake of Christ. And so every time we gather and partake of this meal, we are, in effect, celebrating Christmas. And this week, uh, an old Advent hymn was on my mind. I would attempt to sing it, but one, it's 10 verses, and two, the tune is such that my voice can't quite stretch far enough to reach the highs and the lows, and I'm not going to torture you this morning. But I want to read it because it is a, a suitable preparation for partaking of the Lord's Supper this morning. O Lord, how shall I meet thee? How welcome thee aright. Thy people long to greet thee, my hope, my heart's delight. O kindle, Lord most holy, thy lamp within my breast, to do in spirit lowly all that may please thee best. I lay in fetters groaning, thou comest to set me free. I stood, my shame bemoaning, thou comest to honor me. A glory thou dost give me, a treasure safe on high, that will not fail or leave me as earthly riches fly. Love caused thine incarnation, love brought thee down to me. Thy thirst for my salvation procured my liberty. O love beyond all telling, that led thee to embrace, in love all love excelling our lost and fallen race. Rejoice then, ye sad-hearted, who sit in deepest gloom, who mourn o'er joys departed, and tremble at your doom. Despair not, he is near you, yea, standing at the door, who best can help and cheer you, and bids you weep no more. Since debt that fearful burden, let not your souls distress. Your guilt the Lord will pardon and cover by his grace. He comes from men procuring the peace of sin forgiven, for all God's sons securing their heritage in heaven. He comes to judge the nations, a terror to his foes, a light of consolations and blessed hope to those who love the Lord's appearing. O glorious Son, now come. Send forth thy beams most cheering and guide us safely home. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body, the body of Christ, broken for you. And then he took a cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. The blood of Christ shed for you. Lord God, indwell us with your presence, with your life. Renew our spirits and bind us together with cords of love. For great is your salvation and rich is your mercy. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And now it is my privilege to rush our preacher down from her hidey hole in the back of the church, where she has been patiently waiting all these moments. understand that there will be visual aids. And once I am done, oh, that's right, the kids are in the nursery already. Now, if the band could get ready to hit the big music when she comes in, you know, well, you know, Johnny's theme, you know, da 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 And here she is, all the way from the sound booth, Elizabeth Steves. Mighty God, I pray that you would anoint your servant today.
that she would speak forth your word with boldness. Give us ears to hear what you would say to us, and may she be richly used of you today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Kevin. All right. I know, right? Yeah. Um, so, hi. You may not all know me. I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Steves. I am the daughter of the pastor that is normally up here. Um, and I'm also the youth ministry leader here at the church. Um, so that's exciting. And I've definitely given messages, but normally there's like 15 people, so this is a little bit more. Um, but you know, like, like Carrie, we all talk about a lot, this is a season of stretching for the church. So um, why not continue to stretch, right? <laughs> all right. So um, yeah, so I would just, sorry. Of course, I have to have some technical problems because, you know, have to pretend to be my father. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, the teenage version of myself would have used this opportunity to tell some bad dad stories, because I have some. Um, but instead, we'll talk about our Heavenly Father, because, you know, that's what we're here for. Um, you know, you're not here to talk about how my dad pretended to leave me at Walgreens. Um, <laughs> uh, so today I'm talking about very correct, uh, you know, in tandem with the worship team, uh, mountains, right? That's kind of the theme. Uh, but the title is Faith Over Feeling. Um, but mountains, you know, is really the, the verse, you know, that talks about Matthew 17, 20, that talks about being able to move mountains with the faith the size of a mustard seed, right? And um, so, you know, we're focusing on Hebrews 11, um, but move your mountains and having faith bigger than your feelings is really what we're focusing on when we're talking today. So I'm going to start off by reading uh, Matthew 17, 20. I feel like I'm a little bit in the wrong spot. I'm just going to pivot myself. Sorry, I'm like the camera person, so my brain is doing 20 things right now. Um, so he replied, because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Right? So... God, please give me this ability to use your word and to speak your truth, God. Even if I mess up, God, I know you can use it. Um, it's not about me. It's not about what I say. It's not about who I am. It's about who you are, God. Um, and I thank you for this opportunity. And, you know, hi, Dad, back at home. Uh, <laughs> and I pray that you'd be with us as we um, talk about your faith um, and your, your love for us. And you just name it, pray. So... An awesome uh, thing, I have to say some things that my dad always says, right? This is um, his definition of uh, faith, right? And I don't know who this is from. I believe this is an anonymous quote because we don't know who it comes from. But faith is acting like something is so, even when it is not so, in order that it might become so, because God has said so. <sighs> and well, the first time I heard that, I'm like, okay, what is, what is my dad talking about? That's a little... That's a little crazy right there. That's a lot of said so, 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 right? Um, but no, that makes a lot of sense, right? Because we need to act like something is true even when it doesn't seem that way, you know? And even when everything points to it not being that way because God told us it is this way, right? And that's hard. That's what faith is. Um, and faith is something that obviously we all have, um, you know, some of if you're here today. Or anywhere, you know, even if it's not faith in God, every human has faith in something, right? And it's all about having that correct faith and using that faith to lead yourself, right? Like I was talking about uh, that youth group this Thursday about, like, how you throw a Frisbee, right? And it, how you throw a Frisbee is if, I'm, well, if I want to throw it that way, I need to end up pointing that way. Because if I throw a Frisbee that way but I end up pointing that way, it's going to go that way, right? So where we... Uh, determine ourselves and what we think about and where our faith lies is where we're going to end up, right? So if we're only faithful on, on Sundays, then we might be pointing in the wrong direction, right? So that's what I think about when I think of faith and I think about um, this definition here. So I also learned from my father, all the best messages have props. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to be talking about how faith is like duct tape. Because <laughs> I like analogies. I'm a youth minister. Um, so analogies, you know, they're, they're kind of what I can tune in with the, the teens about, right? So today I'm going to be talking about duct tape and faith, right? Because I grew up on a farm where, you know, if you got a cut, there's some super glue, right? There's <laughs> there, and then really if you need it, there's a bandage, but super glue is always the go-to. And then there's also duct tape, duct tape, especially Gorilla Glue duct tape. Man, that, that stuff will 
will take your fingerprints off, I think. Um, but, you know, the ability of duct tape is, is very wide. There's a wide range of ability that duct tape can have. And I think there, there's some things that we could talk about that faith and duct tape have in common. So the first is that faith holds us together, even when life around us is falling apart and in shambles, right? So faith is the basis of our relationship with God. And in believing what the Bible says, no matter what it looks like around us, right? So if you're struck with illness, if, you know, you lose someone important, when things go poorly in our life, we can rely on faith even when it doesn't look like God's there, right? And that's, that's something that's hard, you know, and, and, you know, as someone that's only 24, I've, I've gone through ups and downs and battles with that, but I've also learned a lot already um, about my faith and about how faith is more important than feeling. Um, and for me, that is a huge thing because that's, that's kind of what brought me back to God because I walked away from a while, from God from a while, because I, I had all these feelings. I couldn't, I couldn't have faith because of my feelings, right? But I, I talked to my youth a lot about how feelings, you can't build your tower on feelings, right? You can't build your life on feelings because feelings can change. Someone can walk up to you and punch you in the face or say something that mean to you, and suddenly they've robbed your feelings for the day. Right? But if you have faith, and that is your basis of your day and your life, then you're solid. Right? No one can walk in and wreck your world. Right? So we need to build ourselves on faith, not on our feelings. So faith keeps us together when we're falling apart. Yeah. And, and it's also going to make us, um, it's assuring us of what, uh, sorry. <laughs> Regardless of what's going on around us. Yeah, I've said that plenty. Okay. Um, so then we're talking about Hebrews 11.6 which is without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And I chose this verse um, because I think that it really connects the level, the importance of faith because, like I said, people have faith in many things. People have faith in their football team that they're going to win or their soccer team. I know it's soccer time. Maybe it's over now. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, you know, um, people have faith in many things, but when we come to God, it's not about us, and it's not about what he can do for us. It's about him, and if we believe, you know, that if we have to believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him, we can't follow him hoping for the rewards and waiting for the rewards, because sometimes, and many, many of you can tell us, that rewards don't come exactly when you think they should come, right? God, God's timing is his timing, and we are not God. And we cannot be the God of our life, right? We need to leave the timing and all that up to him. So the second place that faith is like duct tape is that it's useful in any situation, right? If you got a cut and you're out of super glue, duct tape will be an okay solution until you get home, right? Um, it can be used in a variety of situations. And when you're facing a problem, and even if it's an outside of church problem, you know, if it's a work problem, you can still use faith in that situation to solve that problem. Right, because at the end of the day, no matter what's going on, no matter how stressed or upset or overwhelmed you are, if you just have faith in God and give it to him, then you'll be okay, right? And it's not you'll be amazing and great. You might still have those anxieties or the, the overwhelming fear or, you know, something. But the more you trust in God and the more you give that faith to him, he will take those things from you. Uh, you know, and uh, but you have to spend time with him in his word in order for that to have the effect, right? Because faith, faith is a good basis, but if if you know, if you don't build on your faith and you don't work with God to make your faith strong, then you know you might as well just believe in the the soccer team. <sighs> Am I doing okay? <laughs> All right. I need a second. All right. Um, I love how I get up here and I'm like, oh, I'm going to be fine. And then I get up here and I'm like, oh, <laughs> shaky. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yes, please. All right. So Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So faith means having confidence and hope in the promising, in the promises that God has told us in the word, Right. So we have to take him at his word, knowing that he is faithful. Because if we read the Bible, it's, not, it's very easy, you know, someone that grew up in church. I know so many things about the Bible. I know so many things about what God wants from me, what he's asked me to do. But it's very different when it comes to a me problem, 
for some reason, right? It's like I know all that stuff going on, but when it's about me, somehow that's not, you know, it's hard to believe that for yourself sometimes, or it's easy to give advice to other people, but when it's a you thing, suddenly there's a little bit of disconnect, right? Like I, for, for me personally, I, I struggle to feel God's love at times, right? Um, but being the last, having the last year of being the youth minister, um, I have been blessed because when every time I minister to the kids, I feel God's love for each of them, you know, through me. And I can give that love to them. And that has been such a blessing for me as someone that struggles to feel God's love because I feel that love for God through them. Um, and I feel, you know, I, I feel I can see them through God's eyes, and that has always been um, a blessing, right? But faith is the basic requirement of life that keeps our hope alive and from being shaken when we face trials. Because the stronger our hope is, the stronger our faith in God is going to be, right? And that's also something I struggle with because hope is, hope is nice, but hope is hard to keep sometimes, you know? And, and even I catch myself telling my friend that was looking at a dream house, I caught myself telling him, well, don't get your hopes up. You don't know, right? It could, it could go through. He was saying, oh, if this, I don't get this house, I'm just, I don't know what I'll do. And I was like, well, likely you won't, you know? And he's like, well, hey, don't say that to me. But hey, he got the house. He was faithful. He believed, right? But I struggle, you know, in my, in my human nature to not feel that I can give that hope or that, that, um, that faith that everything will go as God wants it to go. Um, but sometimes it might not be what I, how I want it to go, but I need to give that over to God and realize that I don't want it to go how I want to go, right? Because if it was me calling the shots, it would be a very different world going on, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, faith is the most potent force in the whole universe, and it opens the doors, and the, it is the master key to the world of good reports, right? So I, I, when I think about all the things going on in the world, um, you know, that we turn on the news, there's all these, you know, problems and issues and wars um, and, you know, deaths and, you know, there's ungodliness. Um, but at the end of the day, we can't go and help each and every person, right? We're only, you know, a church of, you know, 200 or so, right? We can't, we can't necessarily help ev- all of them. But as long as we have faith in God and pray for them, right, I believe that there will be mountains moved. And it's not about what we can do and for those things. It's about what our God can do and what he can use us to do in the meantime to those around us, right? Um, another way, the last way, that faith is like duct tape, it's reliable. <laughs> <laughs> duct tape is very reliable, and so is faith. Um, when we find reliable people in the world, you know, that we can trust and depend on, it's easy to grab onto them and see, oh, yeah, this is, this is what reliable is like. But God goes far beyond that scope, right? Because God is not human. He can't mess up. He can't go against his nature. He can't lie to you. He can't, you know, break his promises. He can't be, you know, he's love, right? He can't go against those things. So when we say that God is reliable and faith in him is reliable, we actually mean it versus when we talk about our best friend who's always been there for us. That's reliable, too. But, you know, they might have a sick day, right? And they can't be with you on, you know, when you need them on a Sunday, right? Because dad's at home. <laughs> um, but God is not going to go against his nature, right? Um, and I, I've studied this a lot because um, I always look at, I, I took a class in college, God and the Problem of Evil, and you know, at the end of the day, God sets rules for himself. It's not that God is unable to do certain things, but he can't go against who he is, and he can't go against guidelines like free will that he's set up, right? And so when it comes to faith and having faith in the reliableness of our God, we need to look at his word, believe it, and then act on it. And it's not about, oh, I want to get, you know, from point A to point B now, God, I'm going to go my way. I'm going to go, you know, do this over here because I think I could get there without you. And sometimes we, you know, we think, oh, he'll follow us. Yeah. Um, But we need to wait for God, right, and follow him even though we see where we're going. So that's the hard thing. Sometimes when you don't know where you're going, it's easy to follow God. But when he, like, shows you the door, you're like, ooh, I I can step into that door now, right? And he's like, nope, not yet. We're just getting ready. I'm just, I just want you to know where we're going, right? He doesn't necessarily want you there right now, but he wants you to get prepared, right? Um, so when we rely on God, 
even, even if we get ourselves into a mess, right, like I say, like if we go from point A to point B on our own time, we can still trust God and put our faith back in God, and he will pull us out of that pit of depression or anxiety or addiction or whatever our pit looks like or hopelessness, right? It doesn't matter if he wasn't the one that led us there, right? If you make mistakes, as humans do, and you end up in a place where God didn't mean for you to be, you can always turn back to him as long as you have faith and follow his word and follow him, right? Because at the end of the day, we can have faith in God, but if we're walking our own direction, looking, you know, at ourselves and following ourselves, then we can have faith all the way to hell. And that's, that's probably a hard thing to say, but yeah. <laughs> um, but we can still have reasonable faith that he'll allow him, um, that if we allow him to lead us and get us out of our pit. Because like duct tape, God cannot let us down. I think I have a little too much faith in duct tape, but that's okay. <laughs> Hebrews 11.7 says, By faith, Noah, when warned about the things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir to the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. Right. So when I think of people that have great faith, I think of Noah. And it's not just because I have two of them in my family. Um, but they, he built a, a whole ark. And it's not like he lived by an ocean or a river or anything that could have held that. He was building an ark probably in, like, the middle of, like, a desert area. And everyone, you know, and how, I'm sure one of you know, how long was he building the ark for? What, 200 years? 100 years? It was a long time. It wasn't like it was, like, a good five years and there was the ark and it was built. He was doing this for, like, a good amount of his life. And um, everyone probably really gave him a lot of crap for it and called him horrible names and all that stuff. And, um, yeah, that's, that's some strong faith there, not to burn that ark down after halfway through, right? And I'm so glad he didn't, you know? <laughs> um, but when I look at faith, I really um, I feel that, you know, when it comes to bad situations, at least I'm not building an ark, you know? <laughs> Thanks, God. I'm preaching on Sunday. I found out last night, but... Hey, I'm not building an ark, so might as well just go for it, see what God can do with it, and, you know, just give him the floor. Um, but faith is choosing to believe what God says in spite of what we see and what we feel, right? Like the, like the message title is Faith Over Feeling, right? Because it's not about how we feel. Like, like um, and I tried to find this song, but there's a song that I love. I don't know who it's by or what the title is. But it's about, like, marriage, right, and love and how, you know, the guy, the guy that's singing is asking his wife, will you love me and you, will you stay with me even when our love goes underground? Because that's the thing. And I'm not married. I don't know. But from what I've learned in movies and songs and, and such and from my parents is that sometimes you don't feel the love for your significant other. But because you've made that dedication and that choice to be with them, you're going to love them even when you don't feel you love them. And I feel that applies to us and God as well, because sometimes I don't feel God's love, you know, but sometimes I do, but sometimes I don't. And I have to choose to follow him even when I don't feel those things, because faith is what we're based on a relationship, not feelings. You know, we don't follow God because he makes us feel nice, right? And if we do that, then we're going to be turned around much, many ways, right? But if we follow God because we have faith in him and that we know that he has our best interest at heart, even if we don't get it or we can't see it, then we know that we can follow him, right? <sighs> Sorry, I'm just like breathing. <laughs> All right, so Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. So this phrase that I, I like to, I take from this verse is that faith is measured by your feet and not by your feelings, right? So, and I like that to mean that when you have faith in something great, then that means you, you move your feet, right? And what does that mean if you move your feet? I'm sorry, I'm a youth pastor, I ask questions. Um, so if you move your feet, right, to me that means that you, you do things, you act on his behalf, you know, whether it's, you know, you seeing someone falling down with their groceries and, you know, or and you go to help them, or you see a need in your church and you go to help that, or, you know, we, we act on our faith, right? It's not about, oh, I have faith. It's about showing that faith out, just like the, you know, the light under the bushel tree, right? We have to shine our faith out, and that's what we're called to do, right? Because it's not about if we feel it and we can show it to be, and be happy, right? If we're in a grocery store and someone asks us for help, we're having a bad mood that day, 
We need to have faith and act on our faith rather than our feelings. Because feelings change based on circumstances, um, but faith, mm, the faith shouldn't change. Um, and it's not a mysterious thing that, you know, we can't tell whether we have faith or not, right? You can tell whether you have faith in something. Because to me, it means that if you're, if you're acting on that faith, then you definitely have that faith. But sometimes also, like I feel, like I've, I've worked in that sound booth a little too long. <laughs> um, and God, I'm like, I, I'm just going to give, I'm going to keep my faith that you'll get me out of this sound booth when, when you're ready. Right, and I can I can have some nice time down here to worship and not have to multitask and and I apologize. Brittany's been doing an awesome job up there the last two weeks. The lyrics, by the way, can we just get a round of applause? Um, but if there's ever a moment when I'm doing the lyrics and it doesn't quite go on cue, it's because my hands are up and I'm worshiping, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Sorry, God. Um, but but I need to have faith that you know, that my, my time up there has, has served me well. Because also as someone that is a pastor's daughter, and I've been raised in this church, and I sit up front, you know, because that's where I've always sat, as I've always felt the eyes on me, you know. And I, and I have to understand, and as I'm trying to get out of the sound booth, God had revealed this to me, that that was a blessing for me to go up there, and I'm glad to come back now. But um, the, the ability to worship without feeling like people were watching me, it set me free in a way that I didn't know I needed, you know? And, and I didn't feel that I was happy up there. I wanted to be here. But I still had faith that God was going to sh show me something new up there. And I certainly believe that I have learned how to worship in a more free way, you know, than, when I, than I would have down here. Um, so it's not about our situation. It's not about where we sit in church that de determines where we're going um, where we're going to, uh, how we're going to follow God, but it's, sorry, that distracted me more than it should have. <laughs> She's welcome to continue to cry, by the way, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll join her. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm such a jokester, I can't turn it off. I've been told I have a strange sense of humor, though, so I have to. <laughs> um, but yeah, but I also, but the whole, the whole uh, fact of, um, you know, of faith, right, and that faith is more than feeling, to me, and that faith is determined by your feet, not your feelings, to me, that means that you can feel full of faith, um, but you can actually be faithless, right, because sometimes your feelings and faith, like, to me, uh, let me, let me see if I can explain this correctly, faith and feelings sometime, sometimes can be like this, right, where one is up and one is down, so when we feel like we're all good, sometimes we might be really bad, right? And, it's, and I think the, the place to look and the place to see is where, look at your feet, right? And not like look at your feet, but like see what, what you're doing in your life and, and make sure that that is something that is serving God. Because at the end of the day, we can feel that we're doing everything right, but sometimes we don't allow God to bring us conviction when we need it. Um, does that make sense? Okay, thank you, sorry. <laughs> um, so... Uh, faith is measured by faith, feet, not feelings. Um, so I challenge you to become a person of great faith by being a person of great movement. And the bigger you make God in your life, and the more your movements consist with his uh, scope of his scope of his size, the greater your faith will be, and the greater God will be in you and through you to the world. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> While we're waiting for the uh, worship team to assemble, I mentioned the story about the boys' battalion and climbing the mountain. But I want to bring that into this room and everybody's life here. Because we are all climbing a spiritual mountain. And we need to get there together we don't want to leave anyone behind and we want to see the joy in everyone's face 
when we get there. So let us be mindful of one another, those that are to the left and to the right, in front of you and behind you. And may we prepare our hearts for this Christmas season that it would be different because our hearts are different. Let's worship him.
dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me near to where you are. Amen. So, um, if you would like prayer, um, my daughter is going to come down out of the sound booth, and she's, she'll be willing to pray for you. She, look, she's giving me right now. Um, and so I know uh, Elder, Elder Steve is here. So um, if you want to come up for a time of prayer, and then we'll uh, go out to Kellogg Hall and have fellowship, and then um, our, our annual meeting. So um, uh, we get that started. The annual meeting is today. Today, yes, yes. So and I know Pastor Doug would want me to say, walk with your king and be a blessing. As the message was about faith, let's exercise our faith this week. Wherever our feet bring us, may we bring our faith. If you do not know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, please come up and let us pray for you that you would have a blessed Christmas. Amen. Just one.